everything you do every single day is towards winning. Some people are not competitive at all, some people are slightly competitive, some people are extremely competitive. I am on the extreme side. Lewis, I want to take you back. 206. We are in Istanbul, Turkey. We've just come off the back of the Hungarian weekend. Nelson had done a perfect weekend, first one ever in GP2 history, and had pulled the gap back to you in the championship. It was like a couple of points in it. I think I had a bad weekend in Hungary, right? You had, you'd had a shocker. Yeah. You had, uh, the car broke down in practice. Uh, you a got, spanning qualifying. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Fresh tires. We get to Turkey, Nelson, pole, race one win, race one fastest lap. Mm. There's a couple of points in the championship. We get into the Sunday race. The, the pressure's yeah. massively on you in the championship. I, I remember the pressure also of that year, just... There was a seat in Formula One, potentially, and I knew that I had to over-deliver that year, my first year at GP2. I was racing against people who had been in it longer than, than me, naturally, and the pressure was just immense. And uh, coming off a bad weekend into, into Turkey, again, it was kind of not really looking spectacular that weekend, but I never gave up, and I think the race ended up being great. This Sunday race was incredible you're lining up on the grid in p7 nelson's in p8 after the the saturday race that he'd won and you'd come second i remember at the time you said to me that you'd you told the guys you wanted them to take off as much wing as they could from the car you needed as much straight line speed as they can give you obviously we're looking at a spec series so there's not that much that you could do the only thing i remember back then i mean i i've always been quite technical and i'm always looking into every detail before the race. I'm looking at the whether it's taking wing off to be able to maximize straight line speed, knowing that I've got to overtake. Um, tires are one of the biggest contributing factors to race result. So I have my tires in an in interesting place, which is why you saw what you saw at the start of the race. And this was the start. Yeah. You and your teammate Premat side by side into turn one. Nelson on the inside. Both run a little wide. Yeah, also not got a lot of grip, you know, when we, tires are cold, just really poor grip, struggling to get temperatures in, not really that um, quick. And then I had that spin at, uh, was it turn? Yeah, this one was horrible. I, of course I remember that. <laughs> and just grabbing the clutch and just trying to get going and, oh yeah. Narrowly avoiding Yoshimoto. Yeah, it was all perfect timing. <laughs> you know, just like... <laughs> lucky, lucky in that, in that spin round to avoid everybody. Yeah, the worst thing is to sit and watch everyone pass you. You're down at P18 and battling with Viso, who in the ice sport was pretty quick that year. Yeah. And you touched him. Coming through here, well, you came together. The tire, we're going to have a replay here, actually. Yeah. That little nudge right there. And Eight. it could all have been over. Yeah. Lap two. Yeah, and then he had to back out. And then after that was kind of just head down. When you have a difficult result like that where you spin, yeah, man, it's so easy to give up. It's so, many, so easy to think negatively and, it, and it's a domino effect. But I just kept my head down. I was like, okay, I've got to give it everything. And oh, it was an awesome race to catch up the way I did. Had to fight very, very hard. Looking at what's going down here in the, in the race, straight line speed differential at times appears there, but it's all on, on the braking. Yeah. So the brakes is the braking was the key and, and again that's understanding how hard you can push the brakes that's moving the brake balance around quite a bit similar to what you do now in Formula One but that's always been that's always been me I've always been a late I'm always going to be the one that breaks latest and that's always how I've been this was a nice sequence here you just overtaken Lopez you're about to go through on your teammate as well you're getting up into the serious positions now it was a strong field that year a bunch of guys that you'd known from your junior careers even from karting you had a great battle with Pereira Coming through there, there was Piccione in the field, Lopez, yeah. Premat. I mean, a really strong lineup. I think it was a really good lineup, a lineup of, of very, very strong drivers. Um, there's no substitute for experience. Yeah. So yes, I could be quick and fast with less, ex slightly less experience, but the other, someone with more experience, has been there before, has dealt with the blows, the highs and the lows, and um, so. But I don't understand. Everyone was breaking so early this day. What, what made the difference? Had you changed anything in terms of, of your brakes, of the damping? Or? No, it's, I, it was just with tyre pressures. And there's another one, Degrassi. I mean, no slouch in a single seater. No. Uh, quality driver, and you're just straight through, like he's not even there. I don't know what his exit was there. I don't know, but... I was, yeah. And now, 
now it gets fun. I think this is one of the most enjoyable parts of the race for a lot of people watching. And you won't have known this because you were in the car, but I was in the pit lane, in the F1 pit lane at the time. And every single garage down tools. It was total silence. No one was working on the cars. And it was at this point that you got past Nelson. Everything stopped. Really? And everyone was watching the screens. Nobody did a thing. That's some of the best racing that anyone had ever seen. That was great. It was great wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. and. Very, very tight and close. I mean, geez, we're nearly in the wall here. <laughs> really great racing. I, I don't know where Timo is today, but we had some some good battles at this stage. And really, um, really tough, but but fair. Nelson is one of those kids that had his own team. <laughs> but that's what I was facing, you know, through my whole racing career, is these wealthy families. Um, and it's me and me and my dad. Generally, we we're in the back of this little old trailer with a gas yeah. heater and our, our, our um, thermal flask of, of thermos. Pot, yeah thermos with uh, you know um, noodle soup in it that yeah. was our weekend you know I mean this look this is great you're rounding outside of Nelson you've got the inside for the next so we can't cover you off and then you're straight back on Timo again was that frustrating knowing that you had the pace but you just spent two laps having to get past the guys that you'd already passed yeah, that, it definitely that... was I never I never really like um I don't really think we had too many races, me and Nelson, like wheel to wheel. Not a lot. That's why it was so beautiful and it was such a, a wonderful moment in the championship. No DRS, just the slipstream. Yeah, so that was all about shifting at the perfect time, maximizing the RPM. Um, looking at the outside. I mean, you're looking at, you've got so much pace under, and, and so much advantage under braking that you can look to go around the outside there. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, yeah, and the, I mean, just the, is that Vizo? the traction. No, that's Glock still. Glock. The traction off the corner for you. Yeah. And because you've spun on that lap too, how how sketchy were the tires getting by this point? Because I mean, at this point, take... no, this the tires were. That's why I'm. That's why I'm doing so well is because I'm managing to not go over the top of the temp, the thermal limit of the tire, even though I'm following. And it's all about rear tires. Like, if you can keep your rears from from overheating and staying in and, and wearing too much, then you can go and go and go, and that's yeah. that's been key. So it's how you drive it, it's how much, how aggressive you are with the tires. And and this is it, last lap. And you talk about braking, and Adam, I know Adam Carroll after the race told us, he said, I saw him coming up the inside, but I thought hitting the brakes where he did, he's gonna end up in the runoff. There's no way he thought you were gonna do it. I don't, and that's why he I don't was so upset either. after the race. So far. <laughs> but he was so upset because he left the door open, because like, he's I've, like, Oh, Lewis is wish, ending up in the car park. I wish I had more. Um, yeah, this, this braking was kind of crazy. I don't know why he didn't cover the inside. <laughs> Look at that. I'm sure you can remember this moment over the line. Yeah. You know, this for me was like a... a, a there's been a lot of races that I've not won, but look, it, it's like a win for me. You know, so I don't ha you don't have to win a race in order to feel victorious. You don't have to be first all the time to feel that you're achieving something or on top of the world, you know? It's, it's about how you deal with adversity. For me, I, f I felt so proud of myself. Firstly, I beat the guy that I fight in the championship and he had a basically a head start because that's fun. And then, um, you know, made the, team, made the team proud. I know my boss at, at Mercedes and McLaren were, were watching, so I'm like, oh, I did myself proud today. For the Formula One paddock, this was the day that Lewis Hamilton arrived that no one could ignore you anyway. Mm. To go from 18th to second in that many laps yeah. and to drive the way you did, everyone was like, okay, they, you know, he's a real yeah. worry for us. He's a danger because yeah. he is, <laughs> he's proper, you know? Yeah, that was, that's kind of cool. I hadn't even really thought about it too much, you know? When you're, when you're in it, you're... Um, but you, you were the talk, you were the headline coming out of that weekend. It didn't matter what was going on in the F1 well, paddock. It, I needed, I, it needed to be that way in order to get here. You know? Because the next race was Monza. Yeah. And it was on the grid where Ron right. took you to the side and Yeah. And I know, but I, I felt like I needed to win that year. Like timing is everything. And I was like I can't do two years of GP two. Uh, well I can, but I don't want to do two years of GP two. And particularly as I'm looking at Formula One, I'm seeing the, the slots that are available and there's not a lot of slots often available. And the whole thing with Montoya breaking his shoulder a, a collar blown on a tennis ball. And, <laughs> and, you know, uh, them having a replacement, Kimi moving to Ferrari. I'm like, okay, there's opportunity. And I was always calling. I like, 
on a daily basis, I would call Martin. Um, I wouldn't even bother Ron because Martin was the one that was. Um, Whitmarsh. Martin Whitmarsh yeah. was the one that was really kind of heading up the the program and making sure I got to where I needed to to be. And I was calling him like every day. Hey Martin, when can I drive a Formula One car? When can I drive a Formula One car? <laughs> when do you think? When do you think I could? You know, I was just always. Like, <laughs> he must have. I must have been such a pain, but I was calling him every day. I wanted it so much, and that was really the question: is how how much do you want it? And now you sit here, the most successful driver in Formula One history, more race victories than anyone, on the way to your seventh world championship. But with that kid on that podium, what what did he think was in front of him? Was it this? Uh, I for sure at that point I was I was just I was just trying to get to Formula One, so I wasn't thinking, hey, I'm going to be in Formula One next year. I'm going to get to six or seven. No, of course not. I was just still at that point thinking, oh my God, I don't know if I, I still may not get to Formula One. So every single day that I was in the car, every single one mattered. And I knew that that could be, a, you know, every single race could be a defining moment that would open up the door. And, but in my mind, I was like, I've got to prove myself every single time I get in that car and because I know people are watching. Oh, hopefully I made myself proud. Uh, look good, nice and young there. <laughs>